All right, so now with regard to conditional proofs, let's try this problem on the right. We've got these two assumptions. We're going to try and get the C arrow D and D. So can we do arrow out? We have two arrows, and we don't have to match the left side by itself. Can we do and out? No dots. Can we do and in? We can. Should we? Doesn't get us anywhere. So in this case, is our goal. We need to ask the next question. Is our goal an arrow? It is. There's the left. There's the right. We're going to provisionally assume the left and try and get the right. So we're going to get C as a provisional assumption. You might want to put over here, what am I trying to get? Now I want, I want to get D and E. Okay, now we go back to regular order of business. Arrow out, and out, and in. Can we do an arrow out? We can do two. Get D and E, doesn't matter the order in which we do it. We get D and E separately. Arrow out, one and three. Arrow out, two and three. You might be thinking, wait a minute, we already used the C in line three. Uh, when we're doing formal logic proofs like this, the uh, premises and deductions that we get are not exhaustive. So it's not as though you, you use them once and then you can't use it anymore. You can use any, uh, any assumption or deduction, any premise an infinite number of times. You probably don't want to use it an infinite number of times. You probably want to use it only the amount of times that you need to. Now, can we do another arrow out? Nope, we've exhausted all our options. Can we do an and out? There are no, there are no ands, there are no conjunctions to break apart. There's no dots to split in half. Can and should we do an and in? And what are we trying to get right now? D and E. Do we have the pieces to build it? D and E. And we gotta put them together. How do we put them together? Adjunction or and in? D and E. How do we get it? And in, where do those pieces come from? Four and five. We PA the left, we got the right. This problem done? Nope. What do we have to do? We have to say that we did that. Back out of the subproof now we can say, if you got C, you can totally get D and E. Well, how do we know that? Well, because you can do an arrow in, and if you PA the left, like we did in line three, you'll totally get the right, like we did in line six. So it's done. Let's move on to this one that I have on the left here that I put down here in the uh, intermission, so to speak. We've got F arrow G arrow H. We want to get G and F arrow H. Okay, go down the list. Can we do an arrow out? Nope, no F. By the way here, I just want to remind you, if we had a G, we couldn't get the H out either because that's locked in parentheses and we can't use it. I want to make sure that's clear. Comes in parentheses, you got to get it out of there before you can do anything with it. Okay, that being said, arrow out, nope, and out, there's no ands there. And in, can't do one. You, can't, you can only do an and in if you have at least two things. We only have one, you can't do that. Next question, is our goal an arrow? There it is. What should we do then? Provisionally assume the left, the left side here is G and F, the whole thing here, and we want to get the right, which is H. So we'll do that line two, we'll go G and F. That's our provisional assumption for trying to get H. Okay, so we want to get H now. If we get H, we got the whole thing. Okay, can we do an arrow out? No, you might be thinking, well, I got the F, that, well, that we need it one step at a time. Arrow out right now, nope. And out, here's something, here's a dot right here, here's a conjunction, not in parentheses now. We can go ahead and shatter that to bits, break it down. We get G and F separately. How do we do that? And out on line two for both of these. You think, well, how do we know that? Well, where do these pieces come from? Both of them came from a breakdown line two. Now can we do an arrow out? We'll always go back to the top of the list. Pretty much all, all this entire course will always be going back to, can I do an arrow out, can I do an arrow out, can I do an arrow out, and just adding more things that you could do. That's really what um, formal logic will be in this case. Breaking these down, arrow out, got a match. That unlocks those parentheses. Now we get G arrow H. How? Arrow out, where was the arrow? Line one, where was the match on the left side? Line four. Now that it's unlocked from parentheses, we can do another arrow out. There's the arrow, there's the left side match, we get H. Arrow out, five and three. Hey, we did it, we PA the left, we got the right. Are we done? Nope, we need to say that we did that by saying this. If you provisionally assume G and, F, G and F, you'll totally get H, how? Via an arrow in, if you start with, like we did in line two, and you go all the way to line six like we did. Okay, let's do this last one over here. This last one's gonna be a little bit tricky, but we just think about the procedure. 
We got G and F arrow H. It's actually the kind of the reverse of what we did with that one on the left. Now, what do we do here? Can we do an arrow out? Do we have a G and F? Nope. Can we do an and out? You might be thinking, oh, we can. We got a dot there. We could break it down. It's in parentheses. It's locked in here. Can we do an and in? Can't. There's nothing to conjoin this onto. So we check and see, is our goal an arrow? It totally is. There's the left, there's the right. So let's do this. We're going to provisionally assume F, and what are we trying to get? We're trying to get G arrow H. If we get that, we're good. And here's the problem. Look at this now. Can we do an arrow out? No. Can we do an and out? Still no. Can we do an and in? We could, but let's not, because that's not going to get us anywhere. And now we're stuck again. So what do we do in this particular case? We look and see, well, wait a minute, what am I trying to get right now? What's my goal right now? My goal right now is G arrow H. Is my goal an arrow? Yes. Then actually that means we know what to do. Since my goal is that, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to provisionally assume another one. I'm going to provisionally assume G, and I'm going to try and get, in this case, H. If I do that, I'm good. Now, if I get the H, that will get me the G arrow H, which will get me exactly the conclusion. So this will be like domino. Once you get once you get this thing, the whole thing will just kind of unravel. So, arrow out? No, but I've got this arrow here. It's got G and F on the left side. Do I have G and F? No, but do I have the pieces to build it? G and F? I do. Let's do that. G and F. And so this is a case where we can and should do an and in on lines 3 and 2. What does that do? Got a left side mass that unlocks the H, and this is exactly what I was talking about. Right now the whole thing is just going to unlock for us. We don't really have to do any more work so much as an annotation. We got that H. How? Arrow out one and four. One and four. Now with that, so we did, we provisionally seen the left, and we got the right. That totally got us. G arrow H. How? Arrow in three through five. That totally got us means if we provisionally assume F, we got G arrow H, which means we're able to say this now, most definitively. If you've got F, you can get G arrow H. How do we get that? Also an arrow in. Where do we provisionally assume the left side? In this case, two. Where do we get the right? Line six. So arrow in, arrow in. If you have two PAs, at this point, you should also have two arrow ends. So it's a subproof inside a subproof inside a proof, but the principles remain the same. Next video, what I'm going to do, I think, is talk a little bit about negation.